it. Your, your time's up. Thank you. We'll now move to Mr. McCauley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Minister Shea, welcome. And your backup team, good to have them here. I apologize for being a bit late, but it's pretty rough down on Prince Edward Island, I can tell you. It's a job to get out. Anyhow, good to be here and, and good to have a chance to ask a few questions. I think, uh, Minister, you're fully aware of the great importance of the tuna fishery in the Gulf. And I think you're hopefully full aware of the hook and line fishery as the one of the best managed and most sustainable fisheries methods in the world. And that long liner fisheries are, have some of the most destructive uh, means of fishing. Now, is, are you considering an application to have an experimental long liner fishery in the Gulf? And if so, why? I'm not aware of one, but I don't know if someone in fisheries management can answer that. Uh, not, not aware. We can check and see and get back if we're wrong about that. But that's Thank you very much. That will relieve a lot of tuna fishermen because the tuna fishery is so valuable. In the order paper question that I uh, sent to you concerning uh, the DFO libraries, um, it has been indicated to me that uh, the materials, uh, there was no way to track which materials were digitized and there was no public outreach had been done to offer the material to the public. I just would wonder why this took place there was material gathered over for over 100 years that was valuable not to the walk-in people precisely, but to everybody, but include but very much the government scientists and the fishery scientists. Why did this happen? Well, I guess uh, um, the library consolidation happened because you know we have uh, walk-in clients of base of five to 12 people in the run of a year. So obviously it's not the best use of taxpayers' uh, funds. Uh, we have, uh, you know, everything that is in that library has been maintained, will all be uh, digitized uh, because that's what people are asking for now. Um, uh, many of the publications have been given to other partners uh, who have collections, who have research collections. Uh, so this is responding to, I guess, the, you know, the, the 21st century, the, the, resp the requests that we're getting for, for information. Um, that's how people want their information now. They're not actually going to the library. Uh, so, you know, we've ensured that all of the material is maintained. It is all, will all be digitized um, and will provide a better service to the public. Uh, thank you, Minister. But... Um your order paper, la paper uh, letter to me indicated that your department had no way to uh, track what was digitized and what was not. So how can we know what was saved and was, what was not saved? How do you know what material was saved and what material was not saved? What amount of time did the scientists have to evaluate this material and to know what should be saved? because we all saw the dumpsters out and the material going, and a lot of people involved in the library system quite concerned about what was taking place. I'd just like you to elaborate on that if you could. Well, everything has been saved. Anything that has been disposed of would have been, you know, um, 45 uh, copies of the same magazine. You don't need to keep 45 copies of the same magazine. Uh, so everything has been saved, the originals of everything, and uh, you know whether or not we have a list of everything that has been digitized, I'm sure that that exists in, in different forms, uh, eventually everything will be digitized. Well, the problem that I have is with a letter that I received from you that indicates quite clearly that DFO has no way to track which DFO library material has been digitized and that no public outreach has been done to offer this, the material to the public. Was the letter right? Or are you, uh, they don't know. Uh, I, I just can't understand how you could tell me in a letter that you do not know what's digitized and then you're telling me that whatever is, should be digitized is digitized. Everything, is the letter right? Everything will be digitized, yes. Everything will be digitized. Yes. So in fact, um, 
we can only go that by the your word that it will be digitized. The letter that I received from you indicating that we do not know, just disregard. Well, I'm sure we know that it's all going to be digitized, whether or not there was an itemized list of everything that has been digitized. Uh, I can't tell you that for sure. Well, the only my only concern is that the, the, the letter back tells me there's no way of tracking what has been and what has <coughs> not been, but whatever, we've dealt enough with that. The Small Craft Harbors program has been continually cut. As you realize, it was over 200,000, uh, 200 million at one time, and 111 million in 2012 and 13, and now it's down to 94 million. And the DFO report on plans and priority forecast a budget of 92 million for a 216 and 70. This budget, this year's budget announcement of 40 million dollars over two years on a cash basis. Can you give us any detail on how, when, and where this 40 million dollars would be spent? How would you access it? Well, the 40 million dollars, of course, is put in place. Uh, to be spent over the next two years and to accelerate uh, the work uh, that needs to be done. So we take health and safety issues into account um, when making decisions on which harbours get priority. And the small craft harbour budget has not been cut. As a matter of fact, $20 million has been added to the base budget of small craft harbours. So in fact, uh, the $94 million is incorrect. So the $94 million is our opening budget, sir, for the, from the main estimates at $94.277 million. And on top of that, we will seek the budget increase that the minister referred to from budget 2014 in addition to that amount. What's the addition, sir? The $20 million uh, per year for two years. So we'll get 20 on top of the 94.3. So per year, it'll be around $100 million. And, la and it was 111 last year. So I, my math, the new math I have, that'd be a cut in the budget. Well, I... Maybe I'm mad and wrong, but 94.3 plus 20 would put us up in the, the 114 range, and uh, that would be in excess of the 111. I apologize. My math was wrong. <laughs> now, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Minister. Um, there's great concern, of course, about habitat protection and what's going to be protected and what's not going to be protected. And the DFO Fisheries Protection Program will face a $15 million cut over the next two years. And can you comment on and explain how these moves will be put in place? And what will be cut? I'm going to refer this to uh, Kevin Stringer. So um, th there were indeed uh, reductions associated with the uh, uh, strategic review, uh, strategic operation and review uh, process. Well, we did. However, we ch the legislation changed. The focus is on serious harm. We have consolidated the office from a large number of offices, uh, consolidated and, and done some economies of scale to ensure that we have, uh, you know, sufficient people in, uh, in the offices that we have uh, to do the work that we have to do. I'd also note that while those reductions were being made, uh, the government has also done the investment that, uh, that the minister spoke to and uh, the CFO spoke to in a uh, $10 million a year now with respect to the Recreational Fisheries Partnership Program. So in terms of the, inv the overall investment uh, in, uh, in fisheries protection, yes, there is a reduction in terms of uh, the staff that are reviewing projects. There are processes, consolidation, et cetera, to address that, but there's also an increase in the Recreational Fisheries Partnership Program uh, that helps to offset that. How, uh, um, how many DFO scientists have been um, um, fired or relieved of duty in the last two years? Can you tell me that, Minister? Um, in the last two years, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that right now we have about 1,500 people working in that, uh, in that section in our department, uh, doing all kinds of good science work. And uh, our science budget has remained fairly constant over the last number of years. Uh, and what we've done is uh, ensure that we focus on the science, uh, on our science priorities, and we get our priorities uh, uh, completed. I just, if I might, 
I just want to share some examples because DFO Science does such good work uh, and I want the committee to be aware of some of the uh, work that is being done right now. We're working to examine uh, how cold ocean conditions impact snow crab development uh, off of Newfoundland and Labrador in the southern Gulf of St. Lawrence and in the eastern Bering Sea. Uh, we are also uh, have a multi-year project that uh, we're, we're identifying and quantifying a suite of microbes that affect uh, BC salmon uh, and their effect and their interplay between wild and cultured salmon. Our, our scientists are also on the south coast of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, working with the local fishermen's union and an aquaculture company uh, to determine whether there are any changes uh, to the, the benthic bottom um, environment as a result of establish an aquaculture uh, farm site. Uh, we're also doing uh, science to inform uh, hydroelectric development. We're doing science on uh, the narwhal uh, summering aggregation. Uh, we're doing uh, science, as we talked about, on uh, the Asian carp. We're also doing science on um, uh, the behavior of oil spills in the marine environment. And we're also doing science as well, uh, and we're doing this on the northeast coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, we're, we're doing science on meeting the challenge with, of climate change with uh, small craft harbors. Uh, so what they're doing is exploring the potential use of floating breakwaters uh, as a cost-effective option for minimizing the damage that could happen from severe winter storms. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. McCauley. Thank you. McCauley. Uh, uh, Mr. Gregoire, um, this $360 million class flow, uh, cash flow you're talking about, is that new money? That was money announced in the uh, budget 2012. Announced, yes. That's part of the uh, of the 5.2 billion dollar for fleet renewal that was announced. I'm just trying to get a handle on it. You were taking 36 million, and near 37 million out of acquisition, and and 30.2 million per year, I guess, out of uh, the extension program. Is that correct? Uh, no. The uh, money that 360 million dollars uh, is not uh, A base money, so it's B base money. So it's given for a very specific project. So that 360 million dollars is given to the Coast Guard for 10 years, <coughs> but the cash flow that we had for so that we foresaw before the actual uh, start of the budget is different than what we really need. So we just rebalance, if you want, our need and cash flow over the next 10 years. But, my but, concern, but we're going to use it all. You rebalance it with more or less money? The same amount of money. Same amount of money as you yeah. had a year ago? No, no, but it's $360 million. Yeah. Every year we have different amounts. It was not $36 million per year. It depended on the work we had to do on ship. For some ship, we have to replace the engines, we, we modernize the bridge, we change the galley, we modernize the So basically, the if I understand, not to interrupt you, but it's a working capital, what was needed would be there. What is needed is, is there, has been provided. Um, as you're aware, we had uh, the Atlantic Lobster sustainability measures have been ended. And a number of fishermen are quite concerned at the end of that, at a time when the lobster fishery is going through quite a, um, uh, a difficult time. I also understand that, that they have agreed to put one cent per pound uh, from the fishermen into marketing. How will this be done? What role will the federal government have to play? The federal government has been involved in, in marketing previously. Uh, there is a precedent for this. Um, I'd just like to add that attending some um, fisheries um, uh, markets around the world, I see that the fish is not marketed very well at all. Like I attended a show in, in Shanghai, the only place I could find a lobster was about two feet down in a freezer, where other products were displayed so well. And these were people that were buying products for the retailers. The problem I, and, and there was other products, uh, meat and other things that were done real well. The, pro the problem I see, and the answer I'd like to have, is the federal government involved in helping with the marketing of fish, or is it still the same old thing that it's a provincial jurisdiction? Because the federal government has been involved previously. 
And no. could I, I just, just another thing I'd like an answer for, that 15% uh, limited reference points, uh, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. And I'd just like to know, but I need an answer to this too, and I'm scared that he'll cut me off. Okay. Uh, on lobster, um, first, uh, you're right, the lobster sustainability program comes to an end actually today. It's, uh, you know, the end of uh, a few years. Uh, you know, it's over the years, um, removed about 600 licenses, removed about 200,000 traps from the water, uh, established all kinds of new sustainability measures, biodegradable traps, uh, reduced reductions in traps per harvester, all these types of things, so very, very useful program. The um, panel report, and there were two of them, the one from PEI, but also the one that came from the three, prov three maritime provinces, uh, very comprehensive, spoke to a number of different things, spoke to marketing, spoke to the levy issue, spoke to uh, a number of different approaches, and actually had five recommendations for the federal government. The uh, minister actually released uh, something last, a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, and she was at the Lobster Summit last week and spoke to it. We've accepted all five recommendations that came to us, uh, and th these speak to uh, ensuring that we have clear rules about how we work with industry, providing a support function when it comes to rationalization, marketing, and those types of things uh, as we have in the past, uh, and ensuring that we have uh, up-to-date, modern, information management systems in place. In terms of the, so accepted those, uh, those uh, recommendations, uh, have said at the Lobster uh, Summit last week and in our you know, statements generally that uh, leadership needs to come from industry, but we will work with industry to make the change that needs to be done. I think everybody believes, as you point out, and has been pointed out, we're not getting full value for lobster. Okay, uh, there are things that need to be done. That Lobster Summit, which brought together uh, governments and industry uh, right through the value chain, that's the sort of thing that needs to be done. Uh, they did discuss a levy process, uh, which is being led by the provinces, and they did discuss marketing, but they also spoke about things for the federal government's role, and we've indicated that we will be there for our part of that. On the limit reference point. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bevins. Oh. I, I'm trying to, uh, we'll move to a two-minute.